Amen. Hallelujah. 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 The devil's a liar. Oh, he's a liar. I told Pastor, I said, let's everybody, we're going to stop. We're going to stop. Everybody stop. Stop on that devil. Oh, when this whole thing started, he said we weren't, we weren't going to scream. We brought the equipment together, and then all of a sudden it didn't work. And then we got some new equipment, and it's supposed to work, but it didn't work. And then we got it finally running, and it was just a crash. And I said, don't worry, Pastor. I brought my computer. I'll stream it anyway. I said, something's going to happen. Something's going to happen tonight. I, I tell him, one way I know that something's going to happen tonight is, as you can see, I love to eat praise the Lord. I, I love God's glory. No matter what kind of you eat, I think the first night I ate the word, I just was hungry. And then I remember the story of Jesus walking. And I re- this is something I learned back in India when I was out preaching out there. Is they'd always ask me. They'll always ask me, you got to eat, you got to eat. I don't like Indian food. So, <laughs> so I thought that was the reason. No, I remember what Jesus said when, he, when the, his disciples came to him and said, Master, you must eat. Master, you must eat. He said, you do not know the bread I'm eating of. Amen? Amen. So whenever I can't eat, I'm eating something from heaven for you. So we're going to see something blessed today. Let's all, let's all pray. Father, we thank you, God. We thank you that we're here. We thank you that we're streaming. We thank you that the power of God, your power, is going to move in this house. Father, I pray that the faith in this room ignites. I pray that the faith in this room ignites and releases miracles. And Father, I believe it and receive it for these people as I bring them to you. Let them submit themselves under the word of God and the anointing that's here. Father, we bless you in Jesus' name. You may be seated. You may be seated. When Pastor called me many, many, many months, maybe even a year ago, I was like, you're from where? Louisville. (laughs) Like, what? Where is that? (laughs) Never that I know within a year, that man can pray. Amen? <laughs> if, he, if, he is, if he has something that he wants, he knows how to get it from God. I, I tell everybody this. This is what I tell everybody. When you're around someone that knows how to get something from God, learn from that. Put yourself around that. See where you can change the things in your life. Amen? How many of us know that life isn't what we have to agree to. Amen? Amen. It, isn't, it isn't where we have to accept it. Amen. But life is only changeable by you. God can do nothing for you unless you believe. Unless you believe. Tomorrow's sermon is one of my favorite sermons. I preached it on the second night. and it, 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 I, preached it in, I preached it in Lafayette the first time. No, in Baton Rouge. I preached it in Baton Rouge at my healing service there. And, and it's called whosoever can get whatsoever. And I take that scripture and I really just preach it. I preach it. Do you know we had miracles that night? That night, and, and I'm telling you, have you ever been to Baton Rouge? I'm, I'm Hispanic, for those that are wondering. I'm not Indian. I'm Hispanic. I'm Spanish. My, father, my grandfather was Spanish. My grandmother was Native American. My other grandma was Italian Spanish. So <laughs> we're kind of a mutt. But anyway... Me and my wife were in Baton Rouge, and we're in Lafayette one time, and I'm doing a service there. I'm the guest speaker, and they go, welcome to our country. <laughs> they never seen Spanish people. <laughs> welcome to our country. I'm like, our country, we're, just in, we're in Louisiana. We just came from Texas. <laughs> so she's like, these people are a little different, aren't they? <laughs> they're special, but they're, they're blessed. <laughs> they're very blessed. Now, I've seen some miracles there that was amazing. I could spend the whole three nights telling you miracle after miracle. One miracle I'll just give you real quick. This young man, 24, 25 years old. Anyone here that age? Raise your hand if you're that age. 24, 24 years old. 25, no one 25 in this room? 24, 23, sold. (laughs) Well, anyway, 25, 23 years. Imagine that person never being able to pick up any of his kids and they're three four and five years old 
because he had a back problem for seven years. And he could not pick up his kids. After service, he went and took the kids from mama's hand. She goes, are you, are you okay? And you could tell this woman just loves her husband and knows his limits. That, um, pick up the kids, and she's holding the kids. She would not let go of the kids for anything. And finally, he got the kids from her. He goes, no, I got them tonight. And he walked off, and he put him down. He bent and touched his toes, and he picked his hands up and said, I'm so glad I came tonight. How many of you are glad you came tonight? You're glad. I'm hoping I warm up when I preach here. Because <laughs> it's, 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 it's like I preached in the hottest place, the hottest place in India. I will never, ever make the mistake of going to India in March again. I'm over there preaching. They, it's like I think they thought they were going to have to put me on life support or something because I'm sucking in the air and I'm like sweating and I'm just sitting down. <laughs> and then I preach and I'm under the anointing. I'm fine. But then afterwards, I'm like, oh, Lord. Give me back to the chair. <laughs> it was so hot. And I live in Texas. I live in Houston. And we're hot. We're the number one hottest city in the nation in humidity and, and heat. And I couldn't handle that. I thought, oh, yeah, I can handle it. I live in Houston. Oh, no way. It's just frying me. You, just, you ever been in a place where you just feel like you're frying the whole time? <laughs> and then I came over here. And I said, Lord, I'll never go back there again on that time. Then I came over here. And again, I'm from Texas. I'm not used to cold weather. It's like one degree. I'm like, what? <laughs> Pastor is so nice. He went and bought me some shirts <laughs> to put underneath. <laughs> He's like, you're my guest. I must take care of you. And I was like, I only have, I have only one, one long shirt like this. Only one. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't. So he went today and took me to the mall and just we picked some stuff. And I was like, well, thank you so much. I appreciate y'all being a blessing like that. And I said, man, I was thinking about India and like, India don't sound that bad right now. <laughs> it's so cold in Louisville. <laughs> I was like, India don't sound bad, Lord. I may be able to do one day <laughs> if you just warm me up. I even told them, man, I feel like I'm in hell and I'm preaching my way out. <laughs> it's like it was, it was that bad. It was that bad. How many of you have cell phones? You all got cell phones? I'm not going to tell you to turn them off, so don't be afraid to pick your hand up. Do you all text? Do you all like texting? Okay. Text the word Rev Media, that's R E V Media, M E D I A, Rev Media, text Rev Media to 77948. That's my, that's my number that it goes to. And what that lets you know is it'll send you information and keep you updated with my ministry and let you know when I'm going to be in town or be in a place where you're at, somewhere around there. So if you want to keep up with my ministry, text Rev Media to 77948. You got that? That way, if you want to keep up with where I'm going and what I'm doing, or if you want to just go to our website, and we get a lot of prayer requests on our website. We get a lot of prayer requests. I'm a man of prayer. You know what? Do y'all know why I'm a man of prayer? Because I had a mother that prayed. Amen? Did you hear that? I'm a man of prayer because my mother taught me how to pray. I don't know how many times how many times I heard her starting up the old station wagon and throwing me, getting me and throwing me inside and we're going to someone's house to pray for them. I don't know how many times I've seen the aunts, my, my aunts go with her and go pray for people. I don't know how many times I was in church services. My mother dragged me to church services. I was in special meetings. Uh, was it R.W. Shambach, David Wilkerson? Um, Oh my goodness, so many more that, that I would go to and listen more to Cirillo, and I would go to these conferences. My mother took me there. So don't ever feel, oh, I'm just going to leave them home. Mothers, fathers, don't ever feel, uh, they're not getting anything. I need to make it fun or interesting. It wasn't fun and interesting when I was growing up, but something happened to me in my heart. Amen? During one of those services, I got something, and I caught on to something. And I'm here before you today to preach and speak the gospel. In fact, before I was born, before I was even born, my mother had a tumor. She went to a healing evangelist, Dorothy Davis, and the healing evangelist looked at her and said, that is no longer a tumor, but that's a baby boy. And his name shall be called David, and he's the apple of God's eye, and he will preach the gospel, and he's a healing minister and evangelist, and he will grow up and do the work of the Lord. So you grow with that over your head. <laughs> All your family, 
pulling you aside. No, no, no. You're supposed to be a healing evangelist. <laughs> I tell you, God has a plan for each of us. Amen? Amen. From before you were born, he knew your name. Praise God. Amen. You're not an accident. You're not a problem. You're, you're, you're not. Whatever you were born into, it doesn't dictate what you are. Amen? Amen? The devil tried to make me a tumor, but God said, no, that's supposed to be a baby boy. Amen. That's supposed to be a baby boy. And because of that, because of that faith that my mother had, because of that faith that my family had that prayed for him, my dad was a Holy Ghost-filled preacher, because of that faith that he had, I, it's been passed on to me in faith. You know what? Money will fade. Amen? Whose car is getting old? Yeah, okay, a lot of hands, right? <laughs> Cars will fade. Electronics, they are over, bypassed every two or three years. There's something new and something better. Almost every year now. You got a computer two years ago, it's obsolete. But the faith that you teach your child, the faith that you teach your kid, the faith and how you act and react will never go away. Amen? Amen? You impression those kids and those people around you, how you act in faith. I think one of the, one of the crazy statistics that I end up pulling, just going to doing healing services like this, in, in the last five or six months, I've, I've kind of polled, in a way, the churches I would go. Do you know that two-thirds of every church I visit is sick? Sick. Not just, oh, I have a headache or I have... No, I had this lady in Umble where her hand was completely broken. And for two years, this is in Umble, Texas, for two years, she couldn't go to the doctor. And so it was too late to, you know, to break it and to, to set it correctly. And she had to put together X amount of thousands of dollars for them to actually cut it open and do what they got to do. And she looked at me and she goes, I don't have anything. I go, honey, you got Jesus. I go, just think on him. Think on him. He knows your pain. He knows it already. He knows your pain. Just think on him. Just, just relax with your heavenly father, and I'm, I'm praying for you. And I was, as I was praying for her, I'm moving her hand like this. I'm massaging it. I'm speaking life. I'm saying, come on. I want to see life in you. Come on. And then after maybe a minute, I looked at her. And I go, I go, darlings, can you open your eyes? You can tell I'm from Texas. I go, darlings, can you open your eyes? And she goes, yes. Is this your hand that's moving? She was crying and crying, and her hand was fixed. It was completely fixed. And she fell out in the spirit, and she just laid, she just laid there on the floor. When I preach, your faith is going to be activated. All right? Now let me explain what that means. Sometimes when I'm preaching, people's faith get activated, and we hear bones popping. Bones popping. Knees are being healed. Backs are being straightened. Because that is when their faith released it. Something was said. Something pushed over their faith to where it released a miracle. Another thing is when, when you come up to get prayed for, some people get healed in the line before I even get to them. I have people just stand in line to give me a hug and say, I was healed before you even got to me. One guy's eyes was going blind, completely healed in Harlingen, Texas. These are miracles happening here, not in the Indian and Kenya where I go preach. They happen there too, but they're happening now in the United States for you. Another thing faith activates, when I put my hand on you. It's going to activate when I put my hand on you. I put my hand on this lady's knee, and it popped. And I could hear it, and this young lady that was with me, helping me pray, she's like, i never seen that or heard that before. And then another, her other leg popped, and we weren't even touching it. See, this lady, for, she fell out in the spirit. When she got up, she was completely healed. She says, for seven years, I could not even pick up my grandkids because of my knee. I could not even walk with my kids. I could not even play with them in the yard because I was hurt. I was in pain. Do you know God's will for you? He says, above all, I pray that you prosper and be in health. Even as thy soul prospers. So there's a, there's a relation to your soul prospering. In other words, you get the word of God in you, and your, your life begins to change. You start to prosper in faith. You start to prosper, and your body becomes what? Not healed, but healthy. God wants to make it where it isn't hard to get up in the morning. Amen? 
where you don't have a pain and an ache and you just can't walk to the places where you got to go, where you can't bend. All these things I'm explaining to you or testifying to you are people that have had knee problems, back problems, things that we have to deal with daily. God wants you healthy. And he also wants you to prosper. You can only prosper, and I want to get this in your spirit, is if you're a giver. I got quiet. If you don't give, you don't receive. Your faith can only go so far without you sowing a seed. If you don't sow seeds, you can't reap the promises of God because they are activated by being a giver. I need somebody to come up here. Hey, brother, there. grab my coat. Come up here. Thank you. appreciate you putting my coat for me. No, no, no. Come on, come on. I, th- I appreciate you for putting that there for me. This is God's principle in the simplest form that you can do it. If I sow a hand, I get a hand. Amen? Amen. If I sow a wave, I get a wave. If I sow a smile, oh, he got nice teeth. He smiles good. (laughs) Thank you. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Now, we need a bigger clap than that. I admire your pastor. I admire Pastor Isaac. I do. Because he puts it all out there. There's very few of us that do that. When I went to India the very first time to go minister, I put it all out there. I drained my account. I paid for the whole trip myself. I see a lot of people say, oh, I want to go on mission trips. Oh, I want to go and preach around the world like you do. Oh, I want to go over there and do healing services like you do. Well, pony up. Come on, Annie up. Put the money out there. Put it out there. Oh, well, my money? Yes, your money. I sowed a seed into India. I put it in there and said, God, I'm putting 3000 in. I'm paying for the whole conference. You'll hear about the whole thing in the next three days. And when I went out there, I preached the very first night, and there was such a spirit there, a spirit that was fighting us, that I had to pray because there was fear in my camp. Do you know fear is the opposite of faith? Come on. There's a spirit of fear, and then there's your faith. It, you will receive whatever you believe. You believe in fear, you will get what fear got. You believe in faith, then you will get what faith got. Both live on this earth. Both live on this earth. One's to bless and the other's to curse. So you have to believe that God can move fear out. That night we had a million Hindus on the other side of the tent. I, I, I love boldness. I love people that that are, let's do this for Jesus, but you don't go set up a small 300 people meeting. You don't go set up a 300 people meeting in a small tent beside the tent that has a million people in it. Especially if they're crazy fanatics. I'm like, guys, I I appreciate your faith, but you're going to get us killed. And you know what? These guys were trying to come and get us. They They were starting to threaten my team. The whole night was fearful. People were afraid. So that night I prayed. I remember the book I read from Bernie Davis. And, and he, he was preaching in Mexico one time. And, and he had the same thing happen. He had a spirit of fear come up. And when that spirit of fear came up, he couldn't have, there was no miracles. When fear is in a room, it takes out the miracle working power. Because there's no faith. I need faith in this room. Faith in this room to produce miracles. Jesus himself could not do any miracles, but a few, the word says, because there was no faith in the rooms. There was no faith when they asked him to leave his own city. When they asked him to leave his own city, he could do no miracles but a few. Can you imagine the people that were standing there wanting their miracle, but then these people that blocked it because of fear? That's what was happening. So that night I stood there, I remembered um, Bernie talking about this in his book. That his, he called his dad, who was a renowned evangelist himself, and said, Bernie, that's a spirit of fear. And the only way to get that out is by you. You're the head of that meeting. You need to pray it out. You need to pray it out. He stood up all night praying it out. Next day he had miracles. So I remember that. So, hey, if you don't know, look at someone that done it before. Use it. I do it. And then I went over there, prayed and prayed that night. Jesus himself came into my room, sat on my bed. And I said, Lord, this spirit of fear, it's, it's, really, it's really messing things up. I need your help. I need you to help me, Lord. He said, preach on my name. Preach on the names of God. I'll handle the spirit of fear. Just preach. That morning, the next night when I came out there, I was, I was just ready to go. 
And I went up there and started preaching. I started preaching and preaching. And I started preaching on every name. Every name I could think of of the Lord. Every name. But when I got to the one name, the heavens opened. And I got to the ancient of days. When I said that, and you're going, every devil, demon, foul spirit, fallen angel knows him. And this earth knows him as the ancient of days. I remember that sermon, even today. In the middle of this thing, a wind came down from the top of the tent. Went left to right. At that same time, we were surrounded by these Hindus. And they were going to come into our tent. And the wind went out. You know how tents are, how the wind blows them up on the, on the curtains on the side, on the skirts? It just blew through the whole tent. Came hit, left, right, left, right and gone. Looked outside, not one person was standing there. The very Spirit of God just came through that tent. And miracles started to happen. Now the miracles that I've seen in India, it took five years to get them to the point where I see them today. But God honored the seed that I planted. And I, you know, before, when I tell you how he honored, this is just simple math. Before, I had to take everything out of my pocket to go. I had to, and, then, and how I did that was I would sell real estate as a real estate agent. For the first two years, I'd have to sell a house so I can go on a mission trip. The second year, I just sold one house, and I did two mission trips. The third year, I did two mission trips. I didn't sell any house, but I still had to make the money somehow, some way. And then by the, by the fifth year, which is my fifth year going, I just said, I'm going to Africa. And the next two weeks, the money was there. Come on. If you want a world evangelistic ministry, then you sow like you want one. Come on. Now, that is just simple principles. That's what's worked for me. And let me tell you what I have, what God has blessed me with. I started a radio station with just a computer and a headset and did my shows. In a year, God gave me some space that I could use at a church. In two years, I only had one channel, but I had two channels. In three years, I had four channels, and I'm interviewing people. In the, in, do you know who Marilyn Hickey is? The, Marilyn Hickey? Do you know who Marilyn Hickey is? The evangelist Marilyn Hickey? you know her? B.B. Winans? you know B.B. Winans? All right. You know, um, who else? Yeah, I interviewed B.B. Winans. Uh, several other pastors, well-known pastors, uh, different ones from all over the world on my show. From nothing. All I had was a computer to sew and a little headset and my sweat. Come on. And my sweat. And say, God, if this is all I could put in the offering, this is all I'm putting in there. This is all I'm putting in there. Because it's all I got. I give you everything, my time, and now I have a radio station that people know of in the Christian industry. And I'm booked in every conference, two conferences a year. I do 27 interviews in the one coming up in February. I do 58 interviews in the one that's in Atlanta, Florida, and uh, well, St. Louis. So I do, I'm constantly in interviews. Not only that, but God lifts you up. Amen? Amen. I went from here nobody knowing about me, to hear people calling me and saying, hey, can we schedule an appointment with you? Not only that, I sold books. I created my first book, and it was ugly, ugly, ugly. Ugly. I got most of the back. It was a child that only the mama would love. Nobody wanted my book. <laughs> Even my donors, they said, David, we're going to send this back to you. They paid for the postage. That's how ugly it was. But I didn't give up. God sent me someone that knew how to do publishing, Number one publisher in the nation that created a printing press. Number one distributor in the nation created a printing press and taught me how to do books for the next five years. Three years after that, and I think, oh, well, that's great. Three years after that, I love God's plans because they're bigger. They're bigger. They're bigger. I'm thinking, I'm getting all these authors and these all good men of God that nobody knows about. I signed a real big guy in Humble and... I'm excited, but God had a, big, a bigger plan. And I met the number one, number three publisher in the nation, Christian publisher in the nation, and he sat with me, treated me like I was a regular publisher, and a, a year and a half after talking, and how many of us know the waiting time's the hardest time? Come on! <laughs> you know the promise, but then you gotta wait. That's so hard. It's like, oh Lord, it's so, it's so hard to wait. I can believe, Lord, but can you go a little quicker? <laughs> 
I sat down with Whitaker after his father passed away. Whitaker House Publishing, do you know Whitaker House? They're huge in Pennsylvania, huge around the world, and huge, huge in the United States. Sit with Bob Whitaker himself. His, fa his father passed away, and he'd taken the company in a whole different direction, and he, and he wanted to sit with me about my books. And then the deal was supposed to go through, but it never went through. A year and a half, my authors are like calling me, are you hearing God? Are you hearing God? Who gets that? Are you hearing God? I'm like, I'm hearing God, but if you're hearing something different, you can go. Amen? <laughs> I ain't babysitting anyone. Either you're on board or you're off board. <laughs> I got somewhere God's taking me. I ain't got time to go and take care of you, massage your ego. I know your book's good. Praise God. There's a hundred more. Come on. I ain't being mean. I'm being real. I, and during that time, I've had offers from this huge company. I won't mention the name, but a huge company wanted to take my books just like Whitaker. I just didn't I have to borrow a saying from my good friend Gerald Davis. It just didn't sit well. How many of you that? Come on, you make a deal, you talk about something, it just don't sit well. You're like, Lord, it don't feel right. And I tell you, I appreciate you courting me and sending me things and making me feel special and all that, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I go, but I'm going to have to pass. And they're like, okay, well, we're not going to make the offer again. I'm like, no problem. I'll wait on Whitaker. Year and a half after that, I signed my deal. This is how God does it. Mm. They send me an airline ticket. They have a car waiting for me at the airport. They take me to a nice hotel. Whitaker himself picks me up in the morning for breakfast, and we go to his office and spend the whole day there hammering out the deal. End of the day, we have a mutual agreement. We shake hands. Two weeks later, three weeks later, they send me the paperwork to sign. That's how God does it. Amen. You ain't got to beg for your blessing. Amen. Come on. Amen. You ain't got to beg. You ain't got to convince. You ain't got to manipulate. When God's hand is getting something, nothing can stop that hand. I will tell you the reason you need to sow, and I'll, and I'll get off the sowing and reaping for a little bit. The reason you need to sow is man can never out-bless God. Man can never out-bless God. But if you want man's blessing, go get man's blessing because it's limited. God is not limited on what he can do in your life. He is not limited how he can bless you and how he can take care of your family. He's not limited because he can heal. He can deliver. He can produce something out of nothing in your life. The publishing just came, came forward. And you know what I found out just last week before I came on this trip? Remember that company that was all trying to get me over there? They were sued. They were taken down by the government. They're in bankruptcy court now, and every one of their authors lost their books. Oh, did God protect me? Yes! Did God give you something in you that says it doesn't feel right? Come on. Oh, you may want what they have, but you got to check is that what God wants you to have. you got to check and make sure that that is this the will of God for me. Mm. So the publishing's running. The missions, you know, I've been to Kenya four times this last year. Four times. I didn't pay once. Praise God. God paid. I just believed. God paid. All that out of just sowing seeds into these things. All that. And then God knew my heart. How many know God knows your heart? He knows the desires of your heart. He told me a long time ago through a prophet that he's going to do all these things for God. And then eventually he'll give you the desires of your heart. And you're like wondering... I got the beautiful woman. I got the four kids. <laughs> what else would I want? My heart's the healing ministry. Amen. That has always been me. I've been doing healing ministry since the military. And before then, I was out preaching and praying for people. I, need, I like to see God's people healed. And, I, I, and it's a gift that God's giving me. It's a gift that God's giving me. And he has allowed me to hold more healing services in the last four months than I've had for the last 10 years. And he said, I've released you to do this work because you did everything else I told you to do. Come on. You did everything else. You had your head up high and you worked it. You never looked back. You worked it. You never looked and said, oh, I want to do this first or that first. You worked it in faith. Come on. And now, because of obedience, people are being blessed and healed. 
Now, he can use anyone, but I'm grateful he's using me. Amen? Amen. So from publishing, from broadcasting, missions, healing ministry, God just has bigger plans and bigger plans. And I just go with it, and doors open, and I, I'm able to meet people that I never would have met before if I wasn't in God's plan. You know the will of God in your life when he's blessing. Amen. Amen. So I've seen, I seen all these things, and I have to tell you, none of that would have came if I didn't sow. None of it would have came if I didn't give. None of it would have came if I didn't put my time into it. Ministries aren't born overnight. Take a lifetime. Uh, it takes a lifetime for longevity and relationships ministry. Amen? Anyone, you can preach anywhere. If I want just to preach, I go on my station, turn on the camera, preach to it. But when you're following God, you want the will of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Open your Bibles. We're going to go to Matthew 15, 32. I want to get your faith ready for some miracles. Now, I preached the sermon similar to this first time that I had a huge crusade in India. Let me move this real quick. And I just didn't know what, what God was telling me to do, but I preached on compassion. I mean, you preach, you, when I go to India, let me tell you how it is. When I go to India, I don't go. I don't go to where everybody goes and becomes a tourist in New Delhi, Mumbai, all these nice places. I go into the worst place you can go to. I go into the very place that they killed Australian missionaries and chopped them up in pieces. I go to where they took one of our own pastors 15 years ago and chopped them up into seven pieces and sent them to the church, churches that he pastored, the seven churches. I go to Orissa. If you look up Orissa on your phones and you find out what it's about, it is the most dangerous place in India to preach the gospel. And I go because God tells me that's where I'm to go because I sold you know how long I sowed in India? Not just that first trip. For 15 years, 20 years, I've been sowing in India. Sowing seeds. I work with a world evangelistic ministry called Gospel to the Unreached Millions, Dr. K.A. E. Paul. I was his driver, his cook, anything he needed. I, he needed something from Walmart. I had to go in the middle of the night to pick that up for him. I served. Come on. I served five years for him. Five years I served. He'd be in the plane, I'd be in the car. Going to churches night after night, preaching and preaching for the missions. Never going myself. There's something about sowing that God is trying to put in you, because I can't get off of it. There's something about sowing that God is trying to teach you on how you sow. Amen. You know, the, the, the biggest, the, i tell you wh one more testimony on, on sowing. I think we can finish with that. And that is this. When I got my IPTV station, Rev Media TV, I told you about the radio, but I didn't tell you that I have a TV station as well. It's Internet Provider Television. That thing cost $25,000. $25,000. I was telling my brother and before he came in, I figured, found the solution to my next phase in broadcasting, because we were just doing audio and some video, that I want this whole new system that will make the Christian world just, you know, all the flavors of the world, preaching the gospel, everything. Every nation preaching the gospel through my site. And only Christian stuff on it. Only Christian stuff's on it. And then I was like, well, I found the place. We figured it out. It's a cost me $25,000. i am sitting in a burger place, kind of like Hardee's. It's called Whataburger. I don't know if y'all have them here. With a pastor. And I'm telling him of all these ideas. And he's like, well, how much does it cost? $25,000. Uh, how much do you have? How much do you need? $25,000. <laughs> And he goes, will I get a channel? I go, yeah, pastor, I'll give you a channel, man. You've been such a blessing to me, and I'll bless you back. Would you help me do some video? I go, yes, just tell me what you need. We'll help you do video. And I'm thinking he just wants a channel. That's what we're talking about. Do you know, do you know if they take payments? And I kind of caught on to what was going on. <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, they take payments. Well, uh, find out the first installment, and on Friday, come pick up the check. And then he goes, and every month, you try and make the money you need. If you ain't got it, I'll write you another check till it's paid off. We owed an IPTV station free and clear that we didn't even have to pay. 
because I sold. I took a radio station from a computer and just worked and worked and worked it till I made it four channels till I said, God, I want to do TV. Go find the solution. Found the solution, and God blessed it. He will bless you. You could have anything if you just believe. Amen? Amen. You know what moves God? Do you know what really moves God? Compassion. Compassion. Compassion moves Jesus. In the Word of God, we see it two places, three places, all over the Bible. When the, when the people that were hungry were following him, they, they weren't following him just for the Word. They knew this man, he fed. And Jesus looked, and the Word of God says, if we look at Matthew 15, 22, 15, 32, and Jesus called his disciples to him and said unto him, I have compassion on the multitude, because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. I will not send them away fast and let they, lest they faint on the way. We know the rest of the story, how they got the loaves and stuff. But Jesus' compassion, Jesus' compassion released miracles for people that didn't even pray for that. Come on. Compassion will release miracles for others. Compassion will release something for someone. Let's go to John 6, 26. I'm a pretty quick uh, preacher on this stuff, so don't you worry. Six twenty-six, And then this is the rabbis talked to him. Jesus answered him and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you seek me not because you saw the miracles, and get this, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Hmm. Think about that. Jesus knew that the crowds that were following him were hungry. You ever been hungry? You ever just think of what are we going to cook tonight? Jesus knew that. And these were people following him, 5,000 of them, that were either out of work, didn't have groceries, they were just not making it, trying to make things work, and it wasn't happening. But, oh, wait, Jesus is in town. They bypassed the miracles and just wanted the bread. But you know what? Out of his compassion, he still gave them the bread. Come on. Out of his love, you're still going to get the bread. But I hope tonight, when you come into the house of God, it's not about bread. Hallelujah. That it's about miracles that are going to happen. Now remember the, the, the man that was at the, uh, let's go John 5, 11, we're not that far. Or 5, 1, John 5, 1. I love this story. I'm going to make a little mini movie of this little story. I love it, like a little 7, 10 minute video. Uh, this is John 5, 1. There was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went unto, to Jerusalem. And now there, is a, now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in Hebrew tongue, Beth Sedah having five porches. In there lay a multitude of impotent folk of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the move in the water. For an angel went down at a certain season in the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever the first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole, and whatsoever disease he had. A certain man was there with an infirmity for 38 years. Mm. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he was not be, had been now a long time in that case, he says to him, Wilt thou be made whole? And the impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up the bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed, walked, and on the same day was a Sabbath. Now, I want to tell you this. Jesus looked at someone that was not being helped by others. Come on. He seen someone that others would step over, that would bypass, would not think of their need. Me, 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 me. My need. Jesus seen this, and when he seen this, his heart was broken for this guy. Very few of the miracles that Jesus did that he walked up to someone to pray for them. 
They all came and, and sought him. Oh, son of Jesse, have mercy on me, Bartimaeus. Right? They, they all looked at him. They all crawled to him. They came to him, and they got healed. This man was passed over by people every time. 38 years. There's people outside these walls that are being passed over right now. You may know a few of them that need something in their life, that need a miracle in their life. Now, you're here and you're going to get miracles, praise God. But there's people you know that need Jesus' touch financially, emotionally, spiritually, and salvation. We can't bypass that. We can't step over him and not make him whole. We can't do that. That is not what the church is called for. Amen? The church is called to reach those that are hurting. A lot of people are asking me, well, why are you going to Louisville? Why do you go to Denham Springs, Baton Rouge? Why are you going to Lafayette? Because it's the highways and the byways. Come on. Why are you going to Arissa? Why don't you go to a nice place? Why do you go into the slums of Nairobi? Why don't you just go to Nairobi? Why do you go to Arissa, why do you go to Arissa and you can get killed? Because it's the highways and the byways. It's the place where people have stepped over. Come on, am I reaching you with that? Are you understanding that? Jesus has compassion for those that can't help themselves. But see, you're Jesus' extension. You're here. And he's hoping that you pull him in. It didn't even mention his disciples dragging him and throwing him in there. Come on. You're, how many of us think sometimes we could be one of the disciples, right? Grab him and say, I got him, Lord. Don't worry. We're going to throw him in the pool on time. No. But Jesus had that compassion for him. Another story that I want to share with you. When I was in... Um, my goodness, there's this lady, I would say she was like 300 plus pounds at least, and uh, she couldn't stand. She had to use like a, one of those, those, those walker things just to, just to stand and to walk. She wasn't that old either, and I was like, Lord, I didn't know what was wrong with her or anything like that. And when, when I walked over there, I seen that she was like, I was praying, the line was there. That she, do, she doesn't, she, she can't stand for about less than a minute. Less than a minute is as much as she can stand. So when, when I go over there and start praying for her, I just pray, I mean, you'll find out tonight. I just pray real quick. I just lay hands and go on. Some will fall, some don't fall, but I guarantee you this, you'll be touched by God. Amen? Amen. Amen. I ain't got to sit there and sweat and say, Jesus, I'm going to break your brain. I may crush you. I just believe. I believe God does the miracles. All I do is get your faith to the elevation to receive it. That's all I do. And to release it. So I prayed for her, went on. Didn't even, didn't even think about it, kept going. So I went back to this side, another, another, another group, you know, one group goes by and they get another group lined up. So one other start praying and the pastor like hits me like right here, kiddingly. I turn around and go, yeah. He goes, look at that woman over there. She making a fool of herself. It was that woman. She was in the corner and she was dancing. She was jumping, she was clapping, she was doing squats, she was doing jumping jacks, and she started going, I used to be a cheerleader 20 years ago, and she starts doing cheers and all that. 20 years, she could not bend, her bones were weak, they could not support her weight, and she could not move and stand. And that night, instantly, she was healed. Instantly, she was healed. So, so you look at that. And, and you think of it, and you think, Lord, I know, amen, I know 
that you have something for me. Amen. These are stories, and I hadn't shared much of India or Africa. These are stories of people here in the United States that are getting healed. I was preaching in Houston at my cousin's church, and, and uh, this lady just came up and hugged me And after I prayed for everybody. And that was one of the most powerful healing services I had. And came over there, and I prayed, and, and she just hugged me. And she goes, David, thank you so much for coming. And she goes, I want to tell you, when you were preaching, my back snapped back in, and I was healed. I said, amen, amen. And she goes, I just want to give you a hug. I appreciate that. And I was like, well, praise God for telling me that, because those testimonies will help me teach and preach other places and other parts of the world here. And they're, they're just excited. Let's read Mark, 1, Mark 2, verse 1. This is a very special miracle. I love this miracle. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, bringing them one sick of palsy, which was born of four. So for four years old, he was born with this. And when they could not come near unto the house, get what they did. They uncovered the roof, had broken it up, had broken it up, how many of y'all have that much compassion for someone that you're going to tear the roof off someone's house knowing that you can get in trouble just to get them in front of Jesus? And they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And Jesus said unto and Jesus saw their faith. Whose face did he see? He seen the people that were lowering the bed's faith. And he looked up at them. And he looked at that man. And, and what did he say to the man? Son, thy sins shall be forgiven. So what happens when you have faith to help someone? It leads to salvation. Amen. And then Jesus, in verse 12, uh, verse 11, say, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into the house. And immediately he arose and took up the bed and went forth before them all. I tell you this, when you have compassion for others and you bring them tomorrow night, bring them. And you bring them here, and we pack them on the floor or whatever. It doesn't matter. It'll release salvation to them. Come on. Because of your faith. Because of your faith. And they'll be healed because of your faith. Your faith with compassion will always bring salvation and always bring miracle healing. And I'll tell you this, because of a very special little girl, first slums that I preached at, in, in uh, Nairobi, Mwiki. Do you know where Mwiki is in the Kasarani district? No, this wasn't in Mwiki. This was in downtown Nairobi in the slums right beside there. I don't remember the name of that place. But anyway, preaching there. I preach this scripture. I encourage them to do the same thing. And do you know what happened? We would go out and it was pitch black. We didn't have any more lights. So we're there like, oh, who needs prayer? <laughs> Walking around. And these little girls, five of them, Bring up a little girl that's about five years old. And I'm like, this is, they go, this is our friend. She is deaf. And she cannot talk. I looked at this little girl, and she's all like, what's going on? What happened was, they went, because it was in the actual slums in a little village area. They went to her house. <laughs> she was eating dinner. Her five friends. And her mom was getting her plate ready and turns around. And they dragged her out. They dragged this girl because they heard what I said. And they brought her before me. And it's just when I was about to pray for her, she was gone. You know, the crowd, everybody pushing forward. And I'm like, I got the microphone, so we need this little girl brought to us. Bring her right now. We're not going to let the devil steal this blessing. And they brought her to us. We confirmed it was the same girl, confirmed her friends were there, confirmed she was deaf, confirmed she couldn't speak. We laid hands on her. All of us ministers were, come on, Lord, <laughs> we want this miracle to happen. We're praying and praying and praying. And then I can tell that she's healed because she's starting to mimic what they're saying. I go, guys, she's healed, she's healed, she's healed. Come on. Like, I brought some real Holy Ghost guys. They're like, oh. I'm like, calm down. And I, right when they start praying, they stop praying, and then her mother comes up right then. What are you doing? Oh, you don't mess with another man, woman's kids. <laughs> she was mad at us. And um, we go, Mama, she's healed. And then she looked at us and she goes, what? She's healed. No way. She's been deaf since she was born. No way. 
I was like, she's healed. And then so I go, she goes over there, looks at him, I go, I told the pastor, I go, make her say mama. Tell her to say mama. And she looked at her mom, scared. I go, mom, I go, don't fear, mama, don't fear. It's okay. And she goes, mama. Mama. She started crying and crying. Mama fell out. She fainted. It wasn't the Lord. She just fainted. <laughs> we picked up mama. Mama got salvation. Amen. Daughter got healing. Daughter got healing. What you preach, Reinhard Bonnke says, what you preach, you get. You preach salvation, you get salvation. You preach healing, you get healings. So you preach faith, you get faith. And that night, what I preach, we got. So you, you look at all these blessings, and you look at everything. It all starts with compassion. Who's going to bring some people tomorrow? Who's going to say, who else, you know, make some calls, say, we want to get you in here? Not just because we want to see it full, but we want to see the room full of faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, there's, there's different levels of faith. There's no faith. Come on. There's some faith. There's little faith. There's great faith. But there's a faith that God said that you could be full of faith. Come on. Three people in the Bible had full of, was full of faith. Barnabas, Stephen, and Jesus. And God said that they were walked in the fullness of the Holy Ghost and full of faith. Those three did amazing things. So there's a, there's a level that you can still go to. Praise God. I know you're saved. I know you love the Lord. But there's a level that God can take you even further. So let me ask you this. If you can be full of faith, does that mean you can have low faith? It goes back and forth. It means you can be depleted in faith sometimes. It means that your faith is still there. Because the Bible says everybody's given a measure of faith. But it means that sometimes you've got to be around here, hearing the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Come on. Amen. So when you need to hear the word of God, when you need faith, you need to hear the word of God. Amen. I was in Denham Springs in Louisiana, just outside Baton Rouge. And people just were so nice. They're, they're, they're really good people. And I see a young man in a wheelchair, but I didn't see any faith on him. I didn't see any faith. And he's just so down. I go, buddy, don't get down. Get full of faith. He goes, well, how do I do that? I go, how much have you read the word? How much have you heard the word? Because not much. I go, just hear the word of God. It'll put the faith in you. And next time I come by, I'll pray for you again, and you'll walk. Believe the words you profess over people. Amen? Amen? The Bible says that the words of my mouth shall not return unto me void, but they shall accomplish the things that I please and prosper in the things that I send him. Come on. Know your Bible. Know what it says for you. You know what I tell you about compassion? I was in India this last trip that I went, not this December, but the, a year ago. And when I was there, I was just, I, I was just so zoned out, man. There was miracles that I will share with you tomorrow that are just going to blow your mind off. You don't want to miss tomorrow. I mean, they're just miracles that, that are just so amazing. But I'll give you a taste with this one because we're talking about compassion. I'm zoned out. I don't even remember this miracle. The only reason I remember this miracle, or I'm, t or I'm testifying this miracle, is because I got two confirmations that it happened. Have you ever been so much in the spirit that you're just zoned out? I'm in a Jeep. And we're, dry, we're in, in Indiana, and the music's going, hey, yeah, they, 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 they. so I'm like, good Lord, I'm zoned out already on that. <laughs> and I see the little Hindu God next to my Bible on the, on the dashboard, just both jiggling. <laughs> so I was like, oh, Lord, I just kind of like just push everything out, and it's, it's a hard trip. It's a, we go deep. I, go, I, take a plane, I take two planes just to get to India, a plane to get to where I got to go, and then a five-hour train and a six-hour ride in a car. Come on. I go deep in there, and, and, and it's, it's hard on your body, and you're tired, so I, was just, I didn't know if I was asleep or whatever in the spirit, but we're driving in this Jeep, and I'm like, I look outside the window, and I, and I say, I told them in, Indy to, in, in, in Hindi to stop, and they slammed their brakes. I do not know Hindi, not all that much. I can tell you, I can order my food. I can order my food in almost any language. Praise God. <laughs> Give you the gift of knowing how to order I can uno, dos, or tres on the menu. <laughs> so it's easy. But I, I went over there, and I jumped out of the car, 
I grabbed the translators to come with me. I was talking in Hindi to them. So they're all freaking out in the car. David, you just popped up and jumped out of the car. I'm like, what? So my friend's testifying on the TV show. You don't remember this? We're on live TV. I'm like, no. He goes, David, he goes, you jumped out of the car, you spoke in Hindi, you made a stop the car, and you ran across a crowded street, and you walked to a man that was laying on his back, crooked and broken, and you stepped down and you whispered something in his ear, and he looked at you and his eyes started to tear, and we're all getting there when this happens. And you grab him by the hand, and in Hindi, you told him, the driver translated, to take up your bed and walk. He goes, and you don't remember this. I'm like, I do not remember this. He goes, the minute you grabbed his hand, you yanked him up, and his body became straight, and his legs became straight, and he walked off with his bed. Compassion. God said, I will have compassion on who I will have compassion. I will have mercy on whom I have mercy because I am God. Come on. You don't have to fit in a certain level. You don't have to be a certain way. God says, I'm going to touch you regardless when I want to touch you. That miracle there, it set the tone for our, our ministry. It set the tone for everything that we're, we've been doing. I mean, that was, that was like the cap. That was the cap, if you want to call it that, of what just happened that whole week and a half. I do over 21 healing services in less than 10 days. That's including travel and everything. Less than 10 days. 14 days is all I'm going to India and back. Total travel time. It takes two days of travel. We're going two days of travel back. So we have 10 days to knock out all these places. I do it by faith. I have no partners. Come on. I want you to hear this. I have no partners, no monthly partners. I have friends that I help in ministry that send me gifts here and there. But I have not one monthly giver except for a couple in Dallas that just started last year and a good friend that I help him do his ministry stuff online. He's 76 year old and he always sends me a gift every month to help. Those are the only two checks I know that's in the mail. Ever. Ever. But God has taken me places I could not go on my own. You see, because when you go, he goes before you. I landed in Kenya. Well, I landed before I even got on the plane. I said, Lord, I got this idea. You know it, the Global Broadcast Center, but I can't do it without the best internet in Africa. I need a meeting with Safaricom. God, go before me. Send your angels now. Get me a meeting. I don't know anyone in, in Africa. I'm in, I'm in the mall, the very mall that was attacked in Nairobi. I'm in that mall a week before it gets attacked. They could have did that at any time. I'm in that mall walking and praying and walking and praying for a meeting. And I don't know a week later they're going to attack that mall. That's how God protects you. And then I was looking at where I was going and I went to the safari com, the largest provider, with a friend of mine. He didn't know us from anyone. We just off, off the street inside this mall, like going to T-Mobile or AT&T, the little, you know, retail places. And you think anyone in there can get you a meeting with the board? No. This guy's like, listen to me. I, I, I made a video of what I was trying to do, played it to him for just a few minutes. And he looked and go, I got someone that I know in the corporate office. Let me call him. 30 minutes later, I am sitting, I'm, I'm standing in front of the building with a meeting with the board of directors. And I see these feet painted in the ground from the security check to the main building. And in my spirit, I heard, I walk before you. I go up to that meeting, I ask for everything I want because I know I'm supposed to be there. Praise God. You get some boldness in you. Come on. You get some crazy character in you when you know you're supposed to be there and that God has opened a door that no man can open and no man can shut. And I'm standing there in front of these people. I tell them, this is what I want. Who's with me? And I'm like, okay, kind of got quiet. <laughs> And then this man stands up, and then, you know, over there in, in the other countries, and especially in Africa, in Kenya, they give you the whole title of their life. I am so-and-so, and blah, and blah, I'm the head of this, I went to such and such school, and I'm like, good Lord, so what are you, are you with me or not? He goes, I am the board of director, president. And he goes, I am with you. And then the whole table stood up. I am the chief engineer, I am with you. I am the salesman director 
I am with you. The whole table, 12 of them said, I am with you. And I said, good. And I pulled out of my pocket the coordinates where I need the internet. I slid them across the table. Can you get me the internet there? You go prepared. <laughs> you don't know what you're going to be. And they punch it in the computer right there. Yes. And it's not going to cost you anything. That's how God does it. Amen? I want you to be encouraged. I want, I want you to know that whatever your body's been going through, God don't want you talking about it all that much. He just wants you to believe in all that much. Come on. I got a couple more. Can I share a couple more healing stories to you? There's this guy named Joshua. If you were with me at the Chinese restaurant, you heard about Joshua. The man would not shut up about his pain. We're, I'm in Africa. We're looking at the small little church we're going to use for the event. It was a miracle. Just the church itself was a miracle. Just how the guy got it all together and with a little bit of funds. And when I was there, I looked at him, and I'm like, I'm like, this is cool. And then his, his, the pastor's cousin came up, and he comes up. And the first thing he says, instead of, how you doing, men of God? How you doing? He goes, oh, I'm so sick. Oh, I've been so sick. I went to the doctor. They sent me home. Hospitals closed. Oh, pharmacy closed. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen. It's the weekend. I'm going to be sick all weekend. It's a horrible start to my weekend. I'm like looking at him, and two men of God in front of him. Two men of God in front of him. And he, and he doesn't, he didn't ask us for prayer. So, he, and so finally we talk a little bit, and he still wouldn't get, get off of it. I was just getting frustrated. I needed a Coke. I needed a Coke Coke. <laughs> We're about to drive in the car. Like, I need a Coke Coke. I'm like, come on, guy. That's okay. Why would you go in the car with us? And he wouldn't shut up and wouldn't shut up. And then finally, I was already getting in the car, and I got out of the car. I said, come out of the car. And he came out of the car. He looks like me like he was in trouble. He walks real slow. I go, you keep talking about this sickness. And there's two men of God right here that work in miracles and healings, and you have yet to even ask us to pray for you. I go, do you want to be healed? Yes. Do you believe Jesus can heal you? Yes. Then shut up and don't talk about it anymore. I'm going to pray for you, and you're going to be healed. Amen. Laid hands on him. Got in the car. Went to this, the little, you know how they have little, little restaurants where you can get a drink and just sit down there. We're drinking Cokes. He's finally just talking about things of faith. Sometimes you just got to talk about things of faith. Get your mind off where you're at. And we're just laughing and enjoying each other's company. I go up to like the TV across the room, and I'm watching the, the football game, the soccer game. I'm watching some soccer highlights and stuff. I'm standing there not but for a minute or two. Then I hear, Dr. Yanis, Dr. Yanis, Dr. Yanis. I turn around. It's Joshua. I look, and he goes, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. He bent down. He was fine. He moved around his body, what he couldn't do before. And he had walking pneumonia. And that's what he had. And he could not breathe. He was uncomfortable. He had water in his lungs. God healed him when he shut up about it. I hope I'm not offending anyone. God don't want to hear all about your sickness. He knows what you got. He just needs you to believe and get healed. Amen. You know, when I, when I was in Africa, there was this one, um, this one lady that she had, you know, what's that thing in their neck that they get that big gorder? Is that what it is? Or, yeah. Her pastor didn't even know she had it. I'm preaching and preaching, and I go to pray for the sick. There wasn't many people to pray for, but I felt someone was going to be blessed, but I didn't know she, she was, she was eating something. And then when I walked up to her, she pulls this big scarf off. You know how they wear long scarves of her neck? This big old thing right there. I'm like, oh, Lord, I ain't touching that. <laughs> That's the first thing I said. Lord, I ain't touching that. And the Lord said, touch it. I'm like, okay, Lord. I gently put my hands on it. And then it all get, got squishy real quick. <laughs> and in front of the whole church, my, as I closed my hands softly, it disappeared. The whole church went, ooh. <laughs> they're like wow I was like amen praise God amen praise God and this, this is a little bit of what's going to be tomorrow there was this lady that was in that, that meeting in that same church but not at that same time at a different time I prayed and I, and I just I hear the spirit I say what the spirit says I said you're healed I just barely touched her I kept going and kept going and kept going she's going home she goes why telling her friend that brought her there why did the man of God Say I was healed. I'm not even sick. Why would he tell me that? And she's like, well, maybe he's seen something that you didn't know of or something like that. And 
He's like, no, I'm, I'm fine. I'm healthy. There's nothing wrong with me. And then she calls her friend first thing in the morning and back that she was talking to. And she goes, guess what happened? She's like, what happened? Every morning since I was a child, I would sleep with my hands like this, my feet curled like that too, all the way where my feet would bend. And I'd be in fetal position every time I woke up. I had to wait 20 minutes till my hand released and my feet released. And I was able to get out of my bed. Do you know after the man of God prayed for me, I was healed. I didn't know I was sick. God can heal you when you don't even know it. God can do that. Better stay from that. The, the Bible says that your, your spirit, the Holy Ghost inside you, makes noises and rumblings and groans and shouts and prays for some things that you don't even know what to pray for. That it's constantly interceding to kill the infirmities in your body. That's what the Word of God says. I'm going to teach that tomorrow night. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. I feel your faith is there. I feel God's going to bless. I feel that there's going to be some miracles tonight. We can get some music. Where's Pastor Isaac? I'm going to start the healing service part of it and the prayer line. I want you just to relax. I just want you to, to just let your, let your mind relax. Those that need prayer, we're just going to believe God. We're going to pray right now. And then I'm going to ask you to come forward and uh, make a line all the way across here. And then we make two lines if we need two lines. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. I've had people that have left my meetings in Africa and in India, like that lady that got healed, it was next day that she seen her healing. I had a little boy that got healed, and I'll tell, him your, I'll tell his story tomorrow, 80 miles from where I was at, Jesus healed his crooked legs. Two hours after I prayed for him. Had a woman in, in the bed, and in, 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 uh, they brought her to me in a bed in, in Africa. Pray, I know, in India, I prayed for her, and when I prayed for her, I told her in three weeks, if you're, in a week you're for your leg, in two weeks you'll stand, and in three weeks you'll be able to walk into the church doors and you'll testify that Jesus healed you. And that happened in that accord. So your miracle's here. You may, you, may, you may not see the manifestation. It may be released tonight. It may be released tomorrow. It may be released on Sunday. But your manifestation will come. I'm going to teach on that tomorrow. I will teach on that tomorrow. Father, we just thank you right now. Can we get some music, guys? And Father, we just believe right now that your spirit is here, that your anointing is here. I thank you, God, that you brought me to Louisville. Thank you, God, that these people could have been anywhere else tonight.